All right, friends, the moderator said that we had some questions on how to put on tabby and how to fasten them. They're having trouble fastening the tabby boots that look kind of like this or different kinds of tabby. And they also asked, what do you use at your particular dojo? Now listen carefully, this is opinion, a lot of this. Whatever your teacher asks you to wear at his or her dojo, do what they say. Don't go and say, Mr. Norcross said that. It has nothing to do with that. Please do what your teacher asks you to do. Here at our dojo, we have a couple of options that students can do. Okay, these are called Jika Tabi. These are outdoor tabi here, and you can see they have a rubber sole. Now, we wear these, I wear these because I find that they help my balance a lot. You do not have to wear tabby boots in our dojo. You can wear wrestling shoes are a great option. You can wear socks on, on your feet. We don't do bare feet here at the dojo. I have too many horror stories in the past. I think it's kind of gross, but depending on the martial art, like jujitsu or, some, or something, you, you're not allowed to wear hard shoes because it'll, it'll hurt the, your partner. But for our dojo, we do not allow bare feet. Um, I don't want someone's foot after eight hours of working sticking in my face and I've had too many horror stories of ringworm and stuff like that so we just don't allow it here it keeps the mats much much cleaner again each dojo is different if you're in a traditional karate dojo and they have bare feet do what they say don't go walking in with shoes one day just listen to your instructor talk to them they everyone has different things for their dojo so this is an option you can wear in our dojo I have a pair on right here these are made more for outdoors though I don't usually wear these indoors because it's a couple reasons when you wear these indoors this rubber sticking to rubber mats really is not good for your joints long term if i'm using taijutsu and footwork and moving around every time i put this on the mat it holds to the mat it doesn't slide or move and therefore the knee joint the ankle joints the foot uh, can have issues over the years especially if your taijutsu is not correct you can wear these indoors and they also scuff the hell out of your mat. So wrestling shoes, anything like this, any type of mat shoe is going to wreck your nylon tatami mats over time. Whereas bare feet socks are much more kind to that. But this is an option, but I wear these outdoors all the time. And you can see this is called a high top tabby. There's a low top tabby. These are high top, meaning it goes up past your calf here you can see how it looks on the inside in case you've never had a pair of these it's just a simple kind of shoe that they used to wear with sandals here this allows the nub of the sandal to go in there which is really cool they look ninja like but all Japanese people wore something like this the geta and uh, back then you know they had straw and things like that I wear these outdoors and sometimes you'll see me wear them indoors. I switch back and forth because I want my taijutsu to be adjusted to slippery surfaces and ones that hold to the ground. You can argue, well, you're probably going to fight in your shoes, so you want to train with a rubber sole. You want to feel your legs sticking to the mat. Absolutely valid point. But at other times, I want to train in my socks because my taijutsu is better. It, it allows my footwork to move better by moving along the mat and keeping the flow going. Jika tabi, jika tabi. Then you have your indoor tabi. Indoor tabi look like this. And you can get these in different colors. These are black ones here. Indoor tabi are just pure cotton here. And you put your foot in and you have your big toe and the other four here. And that's it. It's just a piece of cotton here and cotton on the top. There's a white sole on the inside, and it has a couple of clasps here, as you can see, these metal hooks that hook into here, and I'll show you how to put these on in a few minutes. These I wear more often than not. I think I have a world record. I wear these 15 hours a day, four days a week, and then another five hours on Saturday. So I don't know any human that wears tabby longer than I do. So I go through many pairs of these every couple months. You can see that after a while, just by moving around and working out with these, you can see the white here. That's what happens. These literally disintegrate over time. Uh, here's another pair here. And you can see how the white is showing. Well, 
you're wearing these for hours and hours a day and moving around these tear after a while as you can see so these are not permanent things I go through these every two months I need new pair I get these from directly from Japan they are very expensive so a pair of these is roughly fifty dollars some some are forty but the shipping is another thirty or forty I recommend if you're gonna order some from Japan get several pair and then save on shipping that way you can get one package there are tabby size charts online that you can Google. Just type in T-A-B-I, tabby boot, size chart, and you can correspond them to European sizes. So this is, I wear a size 12 shoe, so I forget what these are. I, I can't even remember the number. It's like 29, 30, something like that. And depending on your calf size, these are very good because they're short. So if you have a fat or big calf or very muscular calf, these you don't have to worry about not being able to get these on because they're short they stop at your ankle the ones that I'm wearing here are high top tabby as you can see these go way up up to here so a lot of people that I know in America who have really big legs and Japan they can't wear these because their muscles are too big or legs are too big or whatever they can't fasten these there's not enough room here these do not have any play on them. There's no stretching on these. You either it works or it doesn't. While we're here, let me show you how to tie these here. So they come like this. You put your shoe in, or your foot in, excuse me. And then you pull the tabby on like this. And you start at the bottom. Start at the bottom down here. There are little hooks here. Can you see the hooks? And there are three lines here of, actually there's four. One, two, three, four of little loops that they have sewn in. All of these have loops on them. So depending on the size of your calf and leg, you can either be down here or you can tighten it by going farther across your ankle. Wherever this lays, it lays. So if you can see this loop here, what I do is I take it up and around this hook into the loop here, up and in. Once it's in, I push it this way, which locks it. What a lot of people tend to do is they start at the top and then they, they hook them in as best they can. And by the time they get to the bottom, these pull out again. Start at the bottom and work your way up. Start low, work high. Pull this, really get these tight so that you can keep these on the furthest one that you can. So if you watch, I'm gonna hook and loop these in here. Now I'm going very fast because I do this every day. So this might take someone two minutes to do, whereas I can do it in 10 seconds. Watch, I'm gonna pull these off. Boom, 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 boom. There's like 12 tabs on here. And you can see I'm just fastening them with this system here that I've devised over the time that's very, very fast. So I put these on very, very quickly. That's it. To take your time, it's gonna take time like everything else. Loop, push, push in, push. Push in, push, push in, push. These lines will change depending on the size of your calf. Push in, push, hook, loop, hook, loop, hook, loop, all the way up until you get to the top and then it's good to go. Now, if you're, you wear gi top like this or gi pants, a lot of people like this look of having their leg and this kind of karate gi pant here sticking around. It's fine, it looks good, it's very kind of American looking, it looks nice. But a lot of people do not like these kind of bell bottoms because gi, to gi tops and gi bottoms, as you know, are very standard. They're often made very long. I don't like this sticking out much. You can buy something called kyahan, kyahan, K-Y-A-H-A-N, are leggings. These you can find online. You can get them at Shinobi Gear. You can get them on probably through Amazon, through eBay. What these are, are just simple leggings. You can see that they have Velcro here and here. And what you do is you just put these around your ankle and you can hear they Velcro. Very, very nice. They also make these in hook and loop fastens. You can pick your style. The Velcro is probably a bit more expensive to buy. But what a beautiful invention, whoever did the Velcro. So what this does, if you watch here, is you tuck in all this material. 
like that. And then you put your Kahan on here and pull it and there you go. And now you have this kind of smooth ankle. Benefits of this is, first of all, it keeps the bugs out. So if I'm outdoors training, it keeps ticks and stuff and ants and fleas or whatever from going up your pants, which is a nice benefit. Secondary benefit is just another layer of protection. So if you're doing lateral shin kicks, this small piece of cloth here can actually save you from some bruising. If I'm using a bow or a jow or some sort of staff or spear, naginata, I don't have to worry about it getting caught in my giant pants down here. I don't want bell bottoms to be the destruction of my technique. And I can't tell you how many times I've used a staff and it got caught on my pants and went flying out of my hands. So, and I think it looks cool. This is the ninja look here or the samurai look is having a tight ankle. But if you don't like these, you just pull these off and you're good to go and you have that bell bottom again. These are probably about $50 to buy, maybe 45-ish. I get the large size, it's like small, medium, large. And you can see here it has some stretch to it, which is really nice. So uh, if you have bigger calves, these can probably fit most people. As you can see, these stretch. I have big calves, so once again, now people ask, should this be on the outside of the leg or the inside? It makes no difference. I can take the other Kyahan for the other leg here, and then I bunch this up, and now I put this on so that now the seam is on the outside, or I take it off, I change it for this one, I tuck this tightly, I put this on the inside. It makes no difference where you put it. It's kind of personal preference there. So that is called kyahan or leggings or ninja leggings, some people call them. Here's a pair of soft tabby from Japan. This is what they look like when they come in. As you can see here, this is a size 29 and they're beautiful. You can get these in white. If you want white soles, if you do kind of meditation and you have like a clean room, you're not worried about these getting dirty, you can get white. Soft tabby, you can get dark blue. I've seen a couple different colors, gray. Isn't that nice? So these are from Japan. Tabby that I'm wearing here, these are called air sole tabby. Have you seen those before? What these are, are a thick sole and they have air bubbles in here. There's air in here, almost like Air Jordans or Air Nikes. These are good for those people like myself who are on my feet a lot during the day. So these are not as uncomfortable as some of the other tabby. You pay more for that. These are probably $80, $90 for a pair of these, but they have the air in here so it doesn't hurt your feet as much. I find that when I wear flat tabby like these, that my feet hurt after about an hour on the mat because there's nothing here. It's just a piece of rubber and that's it. There's no support for your arch or anything. That's why these are half the price. Again, you, you're gonna get what you invest your money into. Another question is, do I need tabby socks like this to wear in tabby boots? No. These are official tabby socks. You can see they have the big toe and the others here. These are probably five bucks a pair. You can get these. They make it a bit more comfortable wearing it. I do not recommend wearing tabby bare feet. It gets too sweaty in there. Buy socks between your feet and the tabby. But you can use regular tube socks and just pinch your toe. You take the tube sock and you just pinch the cotton between your big toe and leave it there as you put your tabby on. You do not need these. These are kind of a gimmick. These, in my opinion, are way overpriced and a waste of money. I just buy regular tube socks and I just use those. It gets a little more taking used to, but that's fine. This tabby, which is an outdoor Jika tabby here, I wear these quite a bit. Negative side to this is these have grooves, so they pick up dirt and stuff on the ground quite a bit, so I'll often have to clean these every day and I'll use a lint brush on this side and then I just kind of get all the dust out of this here. Slide it so that your big toe goes in, the other four here. It's already set to go. 
take this, pull it over. I find it's easy to put tabby boots on when you cross your foot over your leg, but if you can't do that, if you're not flexible, you can lean down. Start at the bottom, watch the hook. Here we go, hook, hook, hook. And again, it's changing each stitch row here depending on the size of your leg. And it looks fast, yeah it is, but it's gonna take you a couple weeks to get used to it. There it is, it's done. Pop them off, let's do it again. Hook and loop, hook and loop, hook and loop. Isn't that fun? So I love to prepare for class by dressing because it, it changes your mood, gets you ready for some good training. So you have your outdoor tabby, you have your indoor tabby, you have your high-end air tabby with these little air pockets in here and there are other types there's fashionable tabby there are tabby boots out there that people wear as fashion things so they're made of leather you can buy leather tabby if you want for a couple hundred bucks from italy i mean this stuff goes on and on do you need these no you can wear wrestling shoes bare feet if your dojo allows it socks are fine i tell people just wear your socks in class wrestling shoes are great uh, they make mat shoes they make Kung Fu sh shoes, there's all kinds of different things. But today, we had a lot of questions about how to put the tabby on, what kind should I get, that's kind of a personal preference. But you have indoor and outdoor tabby, that is a real thing. In Japan, they do not allow these. You can only wear indoor tabby. They're like, no, these are outdoor shoes, you don't wear them in the house. But if you're outdoors in Japan, we wear these. If you're Indoors in Japan, you have to wear cotton tabby or socks. Okay, so that's another question I get quite a bit. Kyahan leggings, you can find those anywhere online. Just Google search it and you can find a pair of those if you like that kind of ninja look here. So to finish up, I shall put this Kyahan on one more time to get rid of these 70s bell bottoms here. And there you have your tabby legging kyahan and you're set to go and it'll keep the ticks out all right i hope that answers your questions i'm sure i've missed more this is kind of a, just a fun video on how to choose your footwork for your particular dojo again consult your particular style talk to your sensei and see what they allow on and off the mat all right, everybody, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. If not, I hope you had fun. Have fun with your training. Best of training to you, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.